Welcome to the In My Opinion Show with Ronald Barrington, Robinson and Friends, seen on the internet 24 hours, 7 days a week. See us on YouTube and Facebook, people. Subscribe to uh, to the show, RBRIMO. It is free. I would like to introduce my very talented uh, co-host. We have attorney Glenn Cotton. Ron, how you doing today? Great. We have the, the most esteemed uh, Mr. Henry Hatter. Hi, Ron. Hi, Hi. Ronnie. It's good to be here with Glenn Cotton. <laughs> Welcome on. Let's talk about tariffs. This is uh, June 8th, 2019. President Trump, according to the latest news, all right, has made a deal with Mexico. So come, come uh, Monday, the, uh, the 10th, uh, he will not be uh, instituting this 5% uh, against uh, Mexican goods coming into the United States. But folks, tariffs are bad for everybody, okay? Because all it does, we the students, I mean, we the people have to uh, have to uh, take care of this, all right? And uh, uh, so be careful for what you, you know, what you wish for. You may get it. Glenn, what are your th thoughts on, on tariffs? Well, I, I, I have a, a, a real problem with with tariffs and that is it's us the consumer that ends up bearing the brunt of everything mm -hmm. people may have intentions or side intentions as to why a particular tariff was put in place but in, in, in the end it only hurts the United States consumer who ends up bearing the burden of that that tariff uh, I, I'm very very dissuaded by tariffs in general. They haven't worked with respect to the trade war that we have and dealt with China. They haven't worked with respect to the European Union and this Brexit exit and whatnot. So I believe that we have a lot of issues regarding trade that need to be examined, but I'm fundamentally opposed to a tariff. And I, I just think that it hurts us, the uh, American consumer, in the long run, and we end up paying for it regardless. So there's nothing that I could see that's good for a tariff. Uh, it, it's, to me, it's fundamentally flawed. And also, too, with these tariffs, especially the one that, uh, uh, I call it a bully pulpit with, uh, with Trump and Mexico, okay? That, that is not going to work. That's not going to stem the, the, the flow of those folks uh, seeking asylum, all right? From those uh, South American countries, it's not just South America. It's a lot of a lot of other countries that's uh, uh, th that's coming through. You got you got Africans, you've got uh, 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 Portuguese, you've got uh, a whole host of other of, of, of other uh, of other people coming through that uh, coming through the southern coming through the southern border. So don't let them think that, or don't you let the news media, whomever, uh, uh, electronic print or, or, or whatever, uh, make you believe that it's only South, you know, it's only people from Mexico, because there's all kinds of folks coming, coming, coming that way, seeking a, a better life. Sure, there's going to be drugs coming, you know, I mean, you can't help that, but, 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 but a lot of that stuff is, is, is bullshit, okay, in terms of drugs, because the vast majority of drugs come through buses and trucks and cars, all right, and people walking across, uh, across the... Uh, Ron, you missed the, the biggest the number borders. one transporter of drugs. Mm -hmm. Boats. Boats. See, exactly. People want to talk about people being mules and coming drugs coming across the border, the Mexican border. Drugs, unfortunately, do come across many border crossings, but it's primarily the port cities whether it be mm -hmm. Miami, whether it be Los Angeles, whether it be New York, cities that are on the port that have a lot of international trade that bring in a lot of the drugs. And, and we're going to be honest. When we're talking about heroin, we're going to talk about fentanyl, we're going to talk about things of that nature. Those drugs, unfortunately, are coming across from China. Exactly. So when we start talking about the border, all right, and we want to say, oh, God, we got to stop all of these people from coming across the southern border. 
I really think that the immigration problem is a problem, and, and we were talking about this beforehand, and, and, and it's generally speaking the people who are in the majority now feeling that they're not going to be in the majority anymore and they want to do everything that they can to try to make sure that they stay in the majority and allowing immigration of people who are brown skin or people who do not look like them is the last thing that they want to have. The notion of e pluris unum does not seem to apply to people of color. And that tends to be a problem from my point of view because I think as a nation of immigrants, first and foremost, that we should allow all people in so long as they're going to abide by our American way. And our American way is one that we believe in the rule of law, we believe in uh, the power of commerce, and more importantly, we respect the individual rights of one another. And it, it just is depressing to see all of this rhetoric go into uh, protecting the, the, the southern border, so to speak, when the most poorest border that we have in our country is the northern border. Canada. I, I've been uh, through the Lewis and Clark Expedition Trail on the, on, the, on the river, and I meandered in and out of the United States and Canada like it wasn't any, any problem. And People want to talk about, oh, well, we got national security, yes, it's interesting, things of that nature. If a terrorist really wanted to come into our country and, and do some damage and, and infiltrate us and, and smuggle some stuff across, you could rest assured they wouldn't be trying to come in through the southern border because of the amount of attention that the southern border gets. It would come through the northern border because the northern border gets no attention whatsoever. When you get in between Windsor and uh, Vancouver and you see that vast, vast openness that exists there, people can walk through there like there is no tomorrow. And people are so fascinated and focused on building a wall or, 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 or fencing this and that. If we look to the history of walls and we look at the Berlin Wall and we look at what it did and how it ended up, walls never work. What needs to be happening is technology and modernness can come in to protect the, the borders. You can have electronic laser sensors that can detect somebody crossing the border. You can have drones that can videotape and watch somebody crossing the border. You can see and organize uh, posses coming across the border with respect to that, and you can do things to prevent and or try to uh, round these folks up. But to say that you're going to build a wall or you're going to do something that you, you, you're going to spend this vast amount of resources to construct a wall that's going to prevent somebody from crossing the border, so to speak, I, I, I think really, really minimizes what our national interest is. And our national interest isn't just to protect the southern border. It's to protect the northern border. It's to protect our waterway border. It's to protect every part of the United States from something that can be horrific to us. And if we don't start looking to our complete border security and we only focus on the southern border, then we're going to miss really uh, what protection is, is supposed to mean because we're going to fall asleep on something coming across our northern border and then when it comes across and whether it's that dirty bomb or something of that nature that get, gets across there, we're going to have ourselves a whole host of problems because we've been focusing our mindset mm -hmm. on the southern border because of the so-called illegals coming across there. And I really believe, Ron, that that's just a smoke screen. But when we disguise everything with respect to tariffs and we put that back into the picture, see, the tariffs just fan and stoke the flames of uh, this issue of building a wall or, or having southern border security because when we were talking about our, our tariffs with 
Canada, you didn't hear anybody talk about any building wall in the, on the northern shore. You didn't hear anybody, we need more uh, border patrol agents, agents on the northern border. We haven't heard anything about that nature. But if we really want to think about it, when we have these mass shootings, when we have these mass killings, when we have these mass crimes that are committed by somebody, they're generally perpetrated by somebody who's Caucasian, number one. Number two, that person eight times out of 10 has had some sort of military training. And number three, that person harbors and fosters very, we'll say at the very least, racist uh, uh, thoughts with respect to uh, other people who are not like themselves. So I, 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 I look back and I, I see everything that's going on and I really think the tariffs are being used to stoke the whole mindset of building a wall and, 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 and trying to divide and get people riled up. And, 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 and it really unfortunate, but I, I think it just fundamentally hurts us as, an, as Americans. You know, you mentioned the northern border. All right, I've, I've spent a, a, a lot of time, you know, in Canada and so forth, and I've been up there. You can cross the northern border by walking across the sidewalk, okay? Your sidewalk or your road, all right? Take you 10 seconds to walk across from Canada to the United States. And, and, and uh, it's... They've already started with the drones and shit uh, going, uh, flying over the, uh, this, these walls, all right? I mean, how, <coughs> how, how, high, are, how high are they gonna, they're gonna put the walls, okay? So it's, it's ridiculous. It's just, a bunch of, it's just a bunch of foolishness to confuse the people, all right? Uh, oh, the southern border. Oh, the wall is gonna resolve, it's gonna settle, it's gonna stop all of the illegal drugs. It's crazy, folks. It's not gonna happen. You'll see. Henry, what's your thoughts? Well, <clears throat> first of all, um, <clears throat> this argument began in a flawed way. You have to look at the population density between the South and the North. <clears throat> you hope to assume that the people in the North look more like the President, and therefore we're easier and we have less barriers. But that may be, but still, the truth of the matter is that the population density isn't there. And besides, the terrain won't give, uh, won't, <clears throat> won't give opportunities for people to lay and wait for long hours. It gets cold up there at night and during the seasons of the year. Now, Mexico is quite a bit different. Uh, <clears throat> the population density is probably three or four times that of maybe lower, much more uh, than that, than Canada. I haven't uh, taken a look at any numbers here, but I can guess that, and I think you all will agree with me. But <clears throat> tariffs, the, the tariff proposed by the president is to, is not to punish Mexico, but it's to get Mexico's attention because they have an obligation uh, under the Monroe Doctrine and all of those things that still is effective in this country. Mexico is one of our uh, subordinate nations that we have agreed to, to protect in, uh, on this continent. It's also a leading exporter, uh, America's leading yeah. exporter, I mean okay. importer. <clears throat> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's both of those. And <clears throat> we want to maintain good relationships with both Canada and Mexico. Should we ever be attacked by foreign powers from the East, they would be in a line of defense. We depend on them. We need immigration. And the Mexican immigrants are some of the best in the world. Uh, they can, te technologically, they do well in the plants that they come here uh, to uh, learn their skills. They're great artisans. Um, particularly with stone and other kinds of uh, materials like that, and we need them. They can do things that certain part of the American population has lost its ability to do. They can work in the hot sun, they can work in the cold winter, and they never complain. But try to get English-speaking people to do that. It's difficult. We do need those uh, people that 
and they are good at farming. We will starve to death without them. Because there's uh, very few people will um, will go out and work in a field. You mean take the crops? Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. you know, I'm so sick and tired of of, of, of people uh, uh, um, putting people down. You know what I mean? Because there are a lot of professional Mexicans. Oh, they're okay. not put down. No, what? we don't put down the Mexicans. But that's what you're doing. Well, yes, that's I what, am. That's I'm what you're starting doing. at the bottom. Okay, no. I, I see the thing. The thing about it, it's no, a no, whole no. lot of uh, educated uh, 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 people from South America, not just Mexico. All right, people. So Let don't me straighten you don't, out, don't folks. Get, don't get this fooled. This is the wrong don't, assumption. Don't, don't get fooled that. with that mess, all right? I've worked with many Mexican engineers and stuff like that, and I've had some as my students. And they do well. Well, then we okay. should give them credit for what for, for Well, that, first right? of all, we're going to start Teachers, where we have professors, the problem. doctors, nurses. We do. All right, other, other, you know, other, uh, 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 other, other uh, technological people, okay? Uh, we're talking about things that unite us, not things that, that, uh, that divide us. And this is what we ought to be talking about, the things that unite us. But we prefer to talk about things that, that discredit I don't. And, and I that, don't. That's you, Henry. Uh, I don't discredit anybody. I'll have to let Ron have that conversation. Okay. Well, then, uh, then I, in my opinion, you know what I mean? These are human beings. They need to be respected. You want respect. I want respect. Glenn wants respect. These folks need respect, too, okay? And all I hear is this old foolishness on TV all the time. Oh, drugs. Drugs. M13 and all that foolishness, okay? That's talk about the good things. So as I was saying, folks, <clears throat> we dwell on the good things. And I was talking about the tariff, what the president was trying to do with the tariff. He was trying to encourage Mexico to do something different about the migration that's coming into this country. We don't have the space or the jobs to even provide for the people in this country. There are many people in this country, both black and white, who are without jobs. And yet, most of the people that come in, particularly from Mexico, are better educated than we are, uh, than our general population. So, and they, they, have a, they have a skill to offer the economy that keeps the economy booming. And, and this is what I want you to understand that I'm saying is that without them, we can do little. So, <clears throat> uh, but the president hopes, and I believe that this is working. Uh, he's decided to drop this 5% tariff increase in lieu of what the president of Mexico has promised him to do, to get tougher on people who walk into this country without being authorized. That is the sanctity of sovereignty that we must all protect and defend. Well, also, too, in my opinion, all right, the United States should keep their asses out of South America because according to stated information, you got people down there stirring up folks down there in, the, in these countries, all right? The United States is good at doing that. All right, they're good at they're good at stirring up uh, 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 and take you know in, uh, in other countries. I thought we were going to work on the things that unite us instead of divide us. I don't know that people are stirring up stuff down there. I well, have no intelligence on that. The United States has, has their hands in. There are we're already in what 160 different countries. And that's okay. Okay. And I'm so not saying this. I'm not saying it isn't, but I'm saying you know, in in, in the, the present administration, all right, they're supporting uh, the guy you know down there in, in you know in Venezuela. Now, because I guess in Trump's mind, he's a strong man, just like the guy in North Korea. He's a strong man, all right. But they're oh. all. But they're all. Um, our adversaries, they're exactly, our adversaries. Exactly. He's trying to keep shows like this from criticizing his moves. He well, give, you, give you something to think about. If you watch, so it looks good that he, we are partnering with North Korea. Don't believe it. 
well, that's not in my opinion. That I mean, it's shared probably by hundreds of millions of folks that, you know, uh, these people are North Koreans are killing up their folks. Uh, Maduro's down it's there not sh- any killing of our up folks. Business. Okay, uh, uh, Russians yeah, but, are but killing up folks. But if it's folks. not any of our business, why would you share a stage with that man? Why would well, you give him a photo opportunity at the very least? I don't think s- he talks about that. But see, that that's a problem is that the world does talk about it. And, and, and the world looks at us. Here's to, a man that would like to credit. drop a bomb right down your smokestack. He would definitely like to drop no, a bomb. No, I'm talking about the man in Korea. Uh, you know, there's got to be some sovereign, intelligent approach to dealing with him. And also, uh, a number of years ago, um, President uh, Bush had the same problem. And we just, um, he's back again. And well, see, so that's, that, that, that's part right. of the problem in, in, in knowing your enemy. Back in the day, when you knew you, you did not like the Russians, you wanted to kill them, they wanted to kill you. Yeah. All right? I don't look at the North Koreans any different today than I did when I was a boy. And that is, I still want them to be wiped off the face of the map, and I know they want to wipe me off of the face of the map. So when my leader seems to buddy up and chum up with the guy, I have a problem with that because... But you don't know his motive and his strategy. I don't... He has none as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, but that's... You haven't asked him. I don't need to ask him. <laughs> My, then the supposition. No, the supposition is I'm not no, going to let you get a guys, picture. In a court of law. Now, you are a man of, of uh, rope, right? Well, I, I uh, practice law. That's okay. correct. Okay. Now, you can't condemn anybody until you have the facts. The well, evidence. The, the facts are out there. It's about degree of certainty. 90% degree of certainty that this is true. You don't know that about Korea? About what About what in Korea? About, that they didn't want to blow us up? Well, I'm talking about um, about the Trump's position against him. That he's a buddy of his. That's, well, my question to you is this, and this and that. That could be Sarah. Let, let, let me ask you this, Mr. Hatter. And you're a very well-respected man in, in the state of Michigan, well-respected in the country. Do you take pictures with your enemies? I try not to. You try not to. You see, that's and the whole I got, thing. I probably do because they're around me all the time. Uh, but see, you <laughs> would tend to walk away from that picture that you thought somebody who was adversarial to you because you don't want to be associated and show, give them the dignity of having you in their picture. I, I, I understand what you mean. And, and that's my whole point. But you're a man of, of the... Law. Yes, and, 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 I, and he's you, the president. You would defend a Korean, North Korean, as quickly as you would defend an American. No, I would, because I'm going to defend an American first and foremost because I took an oath to defend the Constitution. But, but that's what you do in a case of law. If you had a Korean here and he was being charged, said, with, charged with something, you would, I believe that you would defend him as strongly as you would. Uh, defend any American. Well, took the oath. I, I see, again when I have taken the oath and I'm up, up, uh, upholding my oath. But again, when I'm, when we're talking about the President of the United States and we're talking about a picture, and that picture we we, we talked about, uh, you know, this from back in the day when they had Polaroids and things of that nature. They used to always say a picture's worth a thousand words. Mm-hmm. All right. So if a picture's worth a thousand words, then why? Am I going to let somebody have a picture with those thousand words that I don't like? See, I'll say this, Mr. Hatter. I respect you. I admire your positions. I don't always have to agree with you, but no, you it would always be an honor for me to have a picture taken with you because of who you are and what you've done. Are you sure? Yeah. It's who you are and what you've done. Again, it has to do with respect. And when you respect somebody, you will let the chips fall where they may because you say to yourself, this picture, which is worth a thousand words, I'm going to allow to be taken because of respect. So when I don't respect somebody, like I don't respect the leader of North Korea, I don't respect other folks, I'm surely not going to let myself be taken in a picture with them. 
There are certain individuals, I don't care what their title is, if I don't respect them, you will not see a picture of Glenn Cotton next to them. Notwithstanding, Mr. Hatter, you're a, a, a very influential Republican. That doesn't bother me because I respect you. And if somebody wanted to take a picture out of me and you, I say, go ahead and take the picture because I respect Mr. Hatter. I don't agree with his positions all the time, but I respect him. And that's why I'm hoping that the audience will see that we don't have to agree. All we want to do is bring an argument before the public and after we've done some examination on that so they can uh, have something to know on, to think Well, about. see, you want to always have somebody, and this is the problem with our public today, and that is they're too quick to make a determination and less quick to get the facts yeah. behind that determination. That was my point. And, and, mm -hmm. and see, Attorney we, we, we tend to get quick to have the snapshot but we don't want to know what's behind the snapshot. And that's why I ask guys to go back again and again. You're an attorney. You took an oath. So if you had a foreign national here uh, uh, and he was charged with something, you would have to defend him. Well, it, as, put, put, it, put it to you this way. If it fell in my obligation, the case was appointed to me, and that was I accepted that appointment, then, of course, I would defend him to my utmost. But if I had a choice and I didn't have to defend the, the North Korean, you can rest assured that I wouldn't defend them. Now, North this Korean. is what you said that ought to resonate with most Americans. <clears throat> there are many, many uh, black incidents with black people that many attorneys wouldn't take. But there were some who had the courage, the tenacity, the forward to take the case. And I, I think uh, uh, To Kill a Mockingbird, that was well portrayed as... Well, see, not that, that, I think that b b builds off of what you know, I think you're trying to build off is that there were many white attorneys that took on black criminal cases, especially in the earlier days, in the 20s and 30s, that there were not many black attorneys, and they defended black clients, and they took and they were ridiculed by their community for defending these black folks. And the one thing that I will say about an attorney who's an ethical attorney, he's going to look to what his oath is, and his oath is ultimately is to justice. All right, you want to see justice. And sometimes I've represented a whole lot of folks over my career. Some of those folks are as guilty as sin, and some of those folks are as innocent as pie. I want to say something real quickly. Yeah. So get Earl Warren was such a person. Yeah, Earl Princi Warren. a principal and person. I don't know whether anybody knows who Earl Warren is, but I would not have sat in a seat at uh, school with other kids without his vision, his without his courage. That's correct. And our country was completely racially biased. That's correct. We lived in the worst of times. And he had the decision make. to make such a bold statement, and that was in line with not many other folks who had made such a bold statement. And when you mention Earl Warren, who got rest of soul, you can mention Judge Damon Keith. Those are federal judges that took their job very serious, but most importantly, they looked to what the people are, the whole people, not just black folks, not just white folks, not just pigeonholing everybody, but the collective body mm -hmm. of a whole. And I just want to say about the tariff, and, and, I, and I know that we've uh, kind of expanded a little bit, but I have no, I have no problem with the president doing what he's doing. If this works, we'll know in several weeks whether this is going to work. But you and would just say fundamentally, yeah, being a Republican, that you were against tariffs because tariffs generally don't lead to anything good. Well, we 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 live in a worldwide community. What do they call it? a national community? What what do they call it? a world community? And With we, that, unfortunately, we got to bring the show to a close. Just when we're getting started, all right? Yeah, well, yeah. Maybe we should. Look at an hour show sometimes. This is Ronald Barrington Robinson and friends saying, till next time, stay focused.